Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by atom economy. You should then be able to calculate atom economy for a reaction. And this material is for triple students only. Take a look at these two reactions. Both of these reactions produce the compound ethanol which is used a lot in chemistry. So the question is, which reaction should we choose if we wanted to make ethanol? If we look at the top reaction, we can see that every single atom in our starting materials ends up in the product ethanol. No atoms at all end up in waste products. So this means that this reaction is very efficient. In the second reaction, we can see that we've got this waste product. This means that some of the atoms we've put into the reaction are wasted. This is not an efficient reaction. Scientists use the idea of atom economy to work out which reactions are efficient. Atom economy is also called atom utilization. Here's the definition. Atom economy is a measure of the amount of starting materials that end up in useful products. So why is this important? Firstly, by minimizing the production of unwanted products, we save money and that's an economic advantage. Secondly, we also increase sustainability by not wasting resources and that's an environmental advantage. So how do we calculate atom economy? Well, we use this equation. Atom economy equals the relative formula mass of desired products from the equation, divided by the sum of relative formula masses of all reactants from the equation, multiplied by 100. Now, there are a few points about this. Firstly, what's meant by from the equation? We've not seen that before. Well, what this means is that big numbers count, and you'll see what that means later. Secondly, in the question, it will tell you the desired product. And lastly, we cannot have an atom economy greater than 100%, because that would mean that we're creating atoms, and that's not possible. So I'd like you to calculate the atom economy for this reaction. The desired product is ethanol, and I've given you all of the relative atomic masses that you need. You should pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, first we need to calculate the relative formula mass of the desired product, which is ethanol. Ethanol has two carbons, six hydrogens and one oxygen. Adding up all of the relative atomic masses gives us a relative formula mass of 46. However, we've got a large 2 in front of the ethanol here. In other words, we're making two molecules of ethanol. So we've got to multiply 46 by 2, giving us 92. The relative formula mass of our reactant, glucose, is 180. Dividing 92 by 180 and then multiplying by 100 gives us an atom economy of 51.1% to one decimal place. Here's another one for you to try. This shows the reaction between iron and copper chloride to make iron chloride and copper. The desired product in this case is iron chloride. I've given you all of the relative atomic masses that you need, so pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, well, the desired product in this case is iron chloride, and that has a relative formula mass of 127. Adding the masses of all of the reactants together gives us 190.5. Putting these numbers into the equation gives us an atom economy of 66.7% to one decimal place. Now, as we've said, reactions often produce unwanted side products. These represent a waste of money. So in practice, chemists try to find a use for these side products, for example, in other reactions. That way, they don't waste money. Remember, you'll find plenty more questions on atom economy in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what's meant by atom economy. You should then be able to calculate atom economy for a reaction. 